Google just announced the new agent development kit, which is an open source framework for building agents um, using LLMs and, and a, lot, a lot of other really great stuff. So I wanted to go through the quick start document that they have on the documentation there and show you kind of how it works and then how you can run it locally on your machine. Um, you can just go to the link. I'll put it down in the description below and you can just like go through it yourself. But I personally learn uh, really, really well. It helps me a lot when someone's like there walking me through it and talking. So hopefully this can help somebody else. So the first thing that we're going to want to do, and I've already done these things, but you'll go and run uh, this Python command right here to create a, uh, a new environment, a new virtual environment. And I've also set up a root directory. I'm just calling it ADK for right now. And then once we've done that, you'll come over here and you'll run this command, which is pip install Google dash ADK. Once you have that, you're pretty much ready to go and start building stuff. So let's jump into that and build our first agent. We'll set up the project uh, in two ways or a couple ways. One, we want to get this init pi, pi, uh, pi file here. We're going to put something in there in a second. We're just going to go through the project structure right here. Then we're going to create an agent.py file. And again, we'll put something in there in a second. And then we're going to go into the env file and we're going to put a, um, uh, a, an API key in there. I'm not going to show you that because it actually has my API key, but I will show you what to call the API key. And uh, you can go and create your own and then you'll be able to use, you know, uh, Gemini just like I am here. Let's go back to the init file here and we'll copy and paste some code just like that. So we'll just import agent. And then we'll go over to our agent.py file and we'll go and import stuff more specific to the ADK framework. We'll start out by just importing all of the stuff that we need to in order to you know, work with this. And then what we'll do is we'll go and create a new function called get weather. This function will take in a city which is going to be of type string and it will give us a dictionary as a return value. Next, inside of this function, uh, they have some like kind of docs, uh, doc comments that I'm gonna uh, not put in here, but what we're gonna do is we're going to say if city uh, lower, lower is equal to Let's see here, New York. Then what we're going to do is we will return a kind of like a predefined success message here. So one, we'll just say that status is success. And then the next thing we'll do is actually return some kind of a report here, like a weather report. So I'll just copy and paste that in. Uh, from the the article that we're kind of referencing here. Uh, otherwise, though, so basically in every other case, we're going to return an error, status, error, and we will say error message will be, um, uh, let's see, F uh, weather weather report for and then let's put in our city here just put that in some quotes for city city not available no problem okay cool and that should be all that we need for that right there let's also now create another function and this will be for time so get time or let's say current time and this will again take in a city of type string and it will return the same thing a dictionary just as before and we can take we can just take this if statement here and in our error we can say uh, current time for city not available. And then up here, we're not going to return anything just yet. We'll have a time zone identifier. Identifier will be 
America slash New York. Then what we'll do is we'll see time zone or TZ will equal zone info and TZ, oh, TZ identifier. Now date time dot date time dot now will be TZ. And then we will have our report here. And just bring these over a little bit. We'll say status is success. And we will say uh, report, I guess we could also call this like current time or whatever. But um, I'll just say the current time for city is and then we will do whoops we'll do now dot string f time and then in here i'm going to copy and paste the format that they have so that i don't have to retype it should be okay um, okay that should be it for that. Now let's go and create our actual agent, which is going to come from our uh, ADK package that we're now using. And we'll go in here and we will add the name, which is in this case, weather time agent go and add the model that we want to use, which will be in this case, Gemini 2.0 flash experimental. Cool. Let's give it a description, instruction, instruction, instruction. Did I spell that? That doesn't look right. In Instruction. That looks is that right? Yeah, I guess that's right. Okay, cool. Uh, I can answer your questions about the time and weather in a city. Cool. And then we will say tools. And this will be a list of get weather and whoops, get current time. Cool. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is you will wanna add to that .env file, you'll wanna add two things right here. You'll wanna add just this, you can put this in just like that. The other thing that you'll wanna do is you'll wanna go to Google AI Studio. You'll wanna just hit get API key up there and then you'll be able to get your own that you can then put into your .env file and you'll be able to use this just like I'm about to show you. Just to kind of show what we're gonna be doing before we actually jump in and do it and then we'll kind of walk through everything. We're gonna give a query and we're gonna try multiple queries. The agent, which is the weather agent, that's the root agent, is then going to decide, it's gonna look at the query and decide, hey, is this asking about something that I have a tool for? It's then going to make a decision and it's gonna call the appropriate tool and then it's going to return the response to us. We're going to run ADK web. All right, it's now running. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Whoops. Hit open. We'll come over here. And this is the UI that they have for us to actually experiment with our, uh, with our agents that we're creating. So we're gonna go up here and we're gonna select an agent. We have one there, it's the only one. And nothing shows up except for just being able to actually type, which is fine. So let's go ahead and say, what is the weather like in Philly? Philly is the city that I am, that I am in, it's called Philadelphia. This is just what we call it here, Philly. Um, Unmatched, ah, okay, we've got an error. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, okay, so I fixed that. I just had some some quote issues here. So 
adding using single quotes here and then removing the quotes that we had on city seems to have done the trick. So once you get that, it should be fine. Now we'll come back over here and I'm going to type in again, what is the weather like in Philly? And it gives me, I am sorry, I cannot get the weather for Philly. Okay. We kind of knew that was going to happen because we coded it specifically to only work for New York City. But let's take a look at what we have here because it's really cool and it gives you a lot of insight into what the actual agent is doing, which is awesome. So it basically determines that, and we get a little cool visual here, it basically determines that the weather time agent should be calling the get weather, that that's what the user's query is about. And it gives us a little breakdown of the data that kind of went into actually doing that. And so it determines, okay, again, we're going to do the get weather thing. Next, it actually tries to go and make the query, except that the tool isn't able to actually fulfill it because, um, well, it, it was only going to work for New York and we didn't give it New York. So obviously that couldn't work. Also note that it was able to determine what the city was here and it was actually able to give city or Philly as the city argument, which is pretty cool. Now let's do it again, but with a city that will work. And if we type in New York, this should and does work. So let's take a look here. So again, it does this and says that New York is the city and it still uses, um, it still uses the get weather. And then it actually goes and does the get weather tool call. And it also works. It gives us the report, which is the weather in New York is sunny with a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. And then in parentheses, 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go ahead and ask about the time. So what is the current time in Philly? We expect this not to work again, same thing, but it does identify that the time, the time tool, the get current time is the tool that should be used. And again, it gives back an error. So let's do the same thing, um, except that we'll just change Philly to New York so that it does work. New York, uh, New York, let's do that. And it gives us that the current time is, well, it's in a 24 hour clock, but that is correct. It's 418 here, Philadelphia, where I am in New York are in the same time zone. So nothing too hard there to do to, to figure out the time there for New York. Um, cool. So that was the ADK or Agent Development Kit quick view. Um, you can go and check it out in the document below that I will link to their documentation. And I'm gonna be using this for a new app that I've been working on, a startup that I've been working on, which is gonna be a cool little AI platform for building AI agents. So more news on that coming soon. Check the links down below in the discussion or in the description as well. Have a cool discount if you wanna get uh, some some hosting, inexpensive hosting from DigitalOcean. If you use my link, you can get $200 to use, I believe it is, for DigitalOcean. So check that out and uh, subscribe and, and comment, like if you if you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one. Take care. Bye.